Morning all. So, in light of there not being a hockey game tonight, I thought, you know, I want to look at something a little bit different. So I wanted to talk about Cinderella Runs. Uh, now, to me, to me, if Cinderella Run is a team that has to go on the road to start each series and comes out victorious each time. Now, there's one exception on the two boards that I've got here. I've also got some notes here because I know there's going to be teams where people are like, hey, what about this team? But again, I think that to really qualify as a Cinderella run, it has to be a team that's on the road to start each round. And, you know, usually then they'll be the underdog, right? So going back to 1981, where I started watching hockey and really getting into it, the Minnesota North Stars went on a run all the way to the final. And it was definitely a Cinderella run. And it definitely helped me get, you know, more interested in hockey. So for fans who come in cheering for Florida right now, I know there's people who are going to want to call them bandwagoners and yada, 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 but I was I was as well as a kid watching the Minnesota North Stars in 1981. They were the number nine team in the NHL, and that's when they had one versus 16, two versus 15, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they defeated Boston, who were the number eight team, of course, eight versus nine. Uh, then they defeated Buffalo, who were fifth overall, and Calgary, who were seventh. So each round they were against a team that finished ahead of them. And each round they won. Then in the Stanley Cup final, they ran into the New York Islanders. And no, uh, that, that ended it. Now people are going to ask, well, where's the 1982 Canucks? They had home ice advantage in every round, with the exception of the Stanley Cup final, where they lost to the New York Islanders. So we don't have a real true underdog story, Cinderella story for another decade. Which makes things interesting, right? We have a 21-team league. 16 teams make it out of 21 you would think there would have been some really low seed that moves on. Not really. There were upsets, but there wasn't a run all the way to the Stanley Cup final until 1991. And it's the Minnesota North Stars again. So while Dallas hasn't done it, Minnesota did it twice. And what was interesting was they were fourth in the Norris division. They had a miserably poor record. They were 16th overall, again, out of 21 teams in the league. Should be the equivalent of like 25th or 26th in the league now, going all the way to the Stanley Cup final. I can only imagine the comments that that would get. At any rate, they defeated the Chicago Blackhawks in the first round who were first overall. And again, because we're looking at underdog stories, we will often see teams uh, that were first overall losing to these teams that go all the way to the final. Uh, St. Louis was number two overall. So Minnesota went through number one and number two in the first two rounds before meeting the Oilers in the third round who were the 11th team overall in the standings. But of course, they're the Edmonton Oilers. And so that was a difficult out, but Minnesota goes to the final where they got spanked by the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, it, it was a closer series than I had expected, but still, there was no real doubt at any point during that series that Pittsburgh was going to win it. Uh, despite all of my anger and throwing things at the TV, nothing seemed to happen. I didn't throw anything at the TV. So the next Cinderella runs a lot closer, and we see a few of them. So uh, the LA Kings in 1993, they were third in the Smythe division. They were 11th overall. They defeated Calgary in the first round. Calgary was the ninth uh, ranked team in the NHL standings that year. Then they defeated Vancouver in the next round, who were seventh. And then they defeated Toronto in the third round, who were eighth overall. And Toronto does show up on this board uh, a few times. So they're one of those teams that they, they do show up. And, and it goes all the way back to 1993. And it happens again in 1994. In fact, it's interesting to look at the LA run and then the Vancouver run. Um, and again, you know, Minnesota loses. Uh, the LA Kings lost in the final against Montreal. Uh, Vancouver would ultimately lose in seven against the Rangers. But they were the number 14 team in the league. They were, seventh, they were the seventh seed in the West. And they defeated Calgary, who'd finished seventh overall in the standings in the first round. And then Dallas who were 8th overall, and then Toronto, who were 5th overall. So this is where it's interesting to me is that uh, LA went through Calgary, Vancouver, Toronto. Vancouver went through Calgary, Dallas, and Toronto. They just couldn't go through themselves to make it match what LA had done the year before. And again, you know, both Toronto and Calgary, top 10 teams, close to contention, and got taken out in back-to-back -back years by teams ranked lower than they were in the standings. So again, there's a narrative there, right? 1995, we have an Eastern team now that went all the way to the final and won. We have the first first time on this board that we see a, a, an underdog go in and win the whole thing. And it's the 1995 New Jersey Devils who were the fifth seed in the East. They were ninth overall in the standings. 
Uh, they defeated Boston, who were sixth overall in the standings in the first round, and then Pittsburgh, who were third overall in the next round. Philadelphia, who were fifth overall in the next round, and the mid-90s Flyers were tough. Uh, and then Detroit, who were the number one team in the National Hockey League. So that's the second time that a President's Trophy team uh, gets knocked out by a team that's uh, that's really considered to be an underdog. Remember the 1995 Cup Finals? Before that, we had all kind of expected, well, New Jersey with this new trapping thing, Detroit should be able to figure that out, and then they didn't. Now, the 1996 Panthers are not on the board because they were a number four seed, so they had home ice in the first round. The 1998 Capitals were a number four seed. They had home ice in the first round as well. So that's why, to me, it doesn't qualify as a true Cinderella run. And again, people want to qualify as that. That's great. Perfect. 1999. Uh, Seven-seeded uh, Buffalo Sabres, who were ninth overall in the East. Or ninth overall in the standings. So they were seventh in the East and ninth overall, showing how strong the East was in 99. They defeated Ottawa, who were third overall uh, in the first round. And then Boston, who were eighth overall in the second round, before defeating Toronto, who were fifth overall in the next round. So there's Boston again, Toronto again, and it's a conference final yet again, where Toronto had home ice, and they weren't able to convert that into a victory to get them into the Stanley Cup final. So it does go back a ways. Uh, then we get into 2003, and we have another seventh seed that went all the way to the final in the Anaheim Ducks. They were 11th overall that year. They defeated Detroit, who were third overall, Dallas, who were second overall, and Minnesota, who were 10th. This is why I kind of get a kick out of it when people say, well, no, Detroit never had a, had a problem with their reputation for not being able to win. Yeah, they did. And when they lost in the playoffs, people absolutely rubbed the noses of any Red Wings fans in it, and that's that's just how that works. Uh, but that's the thing. When you're a top seed, you're, you're going to bring out the best in the other teams, and at times it's going to go against you. 2004, Calgary, who were a sixth seed in the West and 12th overall in the standings. Uh, they started by defeating Vancouver, who'd finished seventh overall that year in the first round. Then they defeated Detroit, who were first that year, and San Jose, who were third overall that year before they lost to Tampa Bay in the final. Anaheim, of course, lost to New Jersey in a series that no road team won any of the seven games. Buffalo, of course, controversially lost in the final against the uh, Dallas Stars. And I've also got the 2002 Canes on the board here as the number three seed because people are going to ask, well, where's the Carolina Hurricanes? That 2002 team, people didn't expect them to get to the final, which is true. But I don't think that necessarily justifies basically making it a Cinderella run. Uh, because to me, that, that unexpected thing is one, but when they're a top seed and we're like, well, we don't think they're going to do anything. That's not quite the same. Um, and for Carolina, they led a division to get that number three seed that didn't get the kind of respect that it probably should have. At any rate, for the first time in, in a while, I have to say, I need to change boards. So this worked out really well uh, in that the first board is before we get into the salary cap era, and now we're looking at after the salary cap era. That first year, 2006, uh, the number eight seed in the West was the Oilers. They were the 14th ranked team overall. They defeated Detroit, who finished first in the league that year. President's Trophy, not good for Detroit. Uh, San Jose, 11th overall, were defeated in the second round. And then Anaheim, who were 12th overall. So there is some benefit to the Oilers for other top seeds getting knocked out and not having to play against them. But you're playing against the teams that knocked out those top seeds. So there's, there's two ways to look at that. Uh, the 2007 Senators were a number four seed in the East, meaning they had home ice advantage in the first round. Now, 2010, I've made a bit of an exception for, and I'll explain it. I feel like the number seven seeded Philadelphia Flyers, who were 18th overall in the NHL that year, that run in 2010 was absolutely inexplicable and just ridiculous. They defeated New Jersey in the first round, who were sixth overall. Then they defeated Boston in the second round, who were 14th overall, because all the top seeds lost. That, that series, that, that whole playoffs was ridiculous. Um, I can only imagine that, that if uh, that was a playoffs while I had a channel, yeah, good luck with a bracket. Uh, and then they defeated Montreal in the conference final, but Montreal was the number 19 overall team during the regular season. So Philadelphia had home ice in the conference final, even though they finished 18th in the standings. And again, I cannot imagine if that happened now. 
But it was it was a remarkable run, and then of course Chicago ended that, much like Carolina ended the run for the Edmonton Oilers, and Anaheim ended the run for the Ottawa Senators. And we get to 2012, and this is the one that people are comparing the run by Florida to the most. Uh, the number 13 overall team in the league was the LA Kings, who were the eighth seed. They defeated Vancouver in the first round, who were of course President's Trophy winners. St. Louis in the second round, they were the number three team overall. And then Phoenix in the conference final, uh, that was the number 11 overall team. One of Phoenix's best seasons, right? Uh, and then in the in the Stanley Cup final, still on the road, and they win. They beat New Jersey, who were the number nine overall team in the league that year. So LA, it was a ridiculous run. A lot of it had to do with Jonathan Quick. Uh, almost any of these runs, you're going to see one of two things. Either a goaltender on a heater or an unexpected goaltender, or in the case of Philadelphia. They're, what, three different ones? Uh, Philadelphia, was it was weird, the 2010 run to the final, in that it didn't seem to matter who was in the net. Which kind of reminds me of what Vegas is doing, although Vegas would definitely not qualify as a Cinderella run, but we had Brassois, we had Hill, and to start the season, uh, Thompson was their starter. So... Yeah, uh, th there's been five different goaltenders for Vegas this year, but I digress. And then we get into 2017, of course, famously the Nashville Predators. Pekka Rene is just too good right now. Uh, the number two wild card in the West, they were the 17th team overall in the standings. And that is definitely something we have seen during this era. And no matter what people want to do to try to make sure that these teams can't win a Stanley Cup, they still could. Uh, and so for, for Nashville, they defeated Chicago in the first round, who were third overall. And, and I mean, I, I had Chicago, I think, taking a cup that year, and just they got swept. Uh, St. Louis, uh, they were 11th in the standings. They got taken out in the second round by Nashville. And then Anaheim, who finished sixth overall that year, got taken out in the next round. So, incredible run. And then, of course, Pittsburgh ended it. And Pittsburgh made Rene look bad when he played in Pittsburgh. It was insane. Uh, but at any rate, the 2019 Blues, people are going to ask where they are. Uh, they had home ice in round two. So they did have home ice. They played against Dallas in round two, and they had home ice there. Uh, and I would also say that with St. Louis, it was more of the big story than, than them being a Cinderella run in the playoffs. Although I understand why people would see it that way um, and want that on the board. So again, it's mentioned. It's mentioned there. So usually when I do this kind of a video, I won't even mention the the teams that don't qualify, but in this case, I thought I would. And then in 2021, Montreal, the ultimate, right? Uh, so they were fourth in the Canadian division. They were 18th overall in the standings. Uh, they defeated Toronto in the first round, who were seventh overall that year. Winnipeg in the second round, who were 14th, because Winnipeg had taken out Edmonton. Uh, and then they defeated Vegas, who were tied for first with Colorado. I said Vegas was first, and I immediately saw, actually, Colorado won the President's Trophy. They were tied in points. Uh, Vegas had more wins, Colorado had more regulation wins, it's honestly, so to me that's tied for first, it's the same amount of points, and so they didn't win the President's Trophy, they were first without the trophy, uh, and then of course Montreal in the final ran into a Tampa team that wasn't in the mood to lose to an underdog, and decided to knock them out pretty quickly. But it feels like this 2023 Florida team is a little bit different, so they're the number two wild card this year, but I want to go all the way back to here. 2006, this was an Edmonton team that wasn't expected to do very much. 2010, the Flyers, kind of all over the place. Good luck predicting the Flyers. Uh, the Kings, nobody thought much of the Kings going to those playoffs. Same with the Nashville Predators, and same with the Montreal Canadiens. Now, the difference to me is that the Florida Panthers won the President's Trophy last year. They underachieved through most of the season. They ended up finishing 17th in the standings. Yes, they finished behind Calgary. Uh, number two wild card, and it just shows, you know, one team, the GM's gone, the coach is gone, and the other one's in the Stanley Cup final. That's how this works in hockey. I know it's frustrating to some, but it's always been that way. Uh, so in the first round, of course, Florida takes out the number one seeded uh, Boston Bruins. Now, they're the first one to defeat a number one team since L.A. did it in 2012. Of course, they won the Cup. 2006, Edmonton did it. They did not win the Stanley Cup, but they did get that series to seven, and again, if not for Rollison's injury, who knows? Uh, the number two team in that they defeated, or the second team they defeated, Toronto, who were fifth in the standings. So Toronto's on the board a couple times here. Toronto was on the first board as well. Carolina, the number two team in the NHL, which is actually more impressive than the LA run, a little bit. Um, and of course, the finals are yet to come. But it defi I would say that of the Cinderella teams, Florida's one that is absolutely 
um, geared to win. And and this is a team with depth. They've got speed. They're great in transition. And now they're getting that goaltending. All throughout the season with Florida, uh, there were issues there on that team, uh, whether it was goaltending, whether it was defensive issues. Just, I don't know, they just seemed kind of blasé a lot of the year, but they got hot at the right time. And that's one thing that all the Cinderella teams have done. They all get hot at the right time, including Minnesota, 10 years apart. Um, and then, of course, they'd win the Cup in 99 after they moved to Dallas, which Minnesota fans still not very happy about. But at any rate, there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. And which Cinderella runs would you say were the most impressive? Uh, so let me know your thoughts. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And if you haven't already hit like and subscribe, go ahead and do so. I will talk to you again soon.